Hello YouTube, Oh here again giving you an update on the Dutch bucket system I just put in. I want to talk today about some do's and don'ts, uh, things I've had to done to cool the system and a little bit of that will be discussed today. Mainly what I'd like to say is don't do this. No, I'm just playing. Actually do it but definitely try to do it in a more controlled environment. I would definitely say yields would be way higher if I was able to get the temperature down on my reservoir. Also the bug situation here as you can see, I'm going to give you a close up to all these leaves. I mean you can see the damage by these little larvae that get dropped into the leaves. I mean you can see, look at the damage to this. I mean, it's pretty significant, and we're in Florida, so you know it's just it's just un inevitable. It's extremely hard to control bugs. I use a pesticide, organic pesticide, to get all those larvae off, and I'm using this stuff here, Captain Jack's. Spinoside, whatever. And it works fairly well. I mean, I had a pretty bad infestation of those little wigglers. And uh, they're pretty much these little larvae that get dropped. And here's a bunch of dead ones. You can see all those little specks are the larvae. Now, I've had to manually go in there as well and kill them off, which you just kind of search through the leaves and just search through the trails that they leave. And you'll see this little yellow yellow speck and that's the larvae and you just gotta flick it off and they that's it and you save belief or at least the rest of it so I did that definitely try to do if you ever try to do this try to do it in a more controlled environment maybe in a back porch where the sun doesn't hit it as directly or at least keep it away from the bugs uh, if you do it in a back porch sun here isn't that big of a deal it's the air it gets extremely hot usually it's 110 117 this summer has been horrible in central Florida extremely hot which has already caused as you can see with the previous tote I had a lot of damage the heat I've lost at least 30 blooms 30 to 40 blooms on my tomatoes I've lost maybe 10 blooms on my peppers here I mean they're blooming so the nutrients are doing what it needs to do got blooms everywhere but the heat just won't let them pollinate and they just die and fall off. I, have, I mean, I have blooms everywhere on these tomatoes. I mean, they are just blooming away. Jeez, the sucker got a little crazy. Should have caught that earlier, but I, mean, I got blooms everywhere, guys. So the stuff is working. Especially now, since I was able to finally figure out a way to cool the, the system down. What I did was, I replaced the tote for a cooler. I should have thought this sooner, but this cooler, I think, holds 8 to 10 gallons, which works fine because I think I put in there a good, I think, 5 to 6, 7 gallons around there, 5 to 7 gallons. And then what I do is I toss in the, in the morning, I'll toss a total of 4 frozen jugs of water. So I'll take, like, I have to think it's like 4 2-liter bottles. I freeze them, and then I just toss them in the morning, and that'll keep it cool while the sun's hitting it and then it uh and then it'll kind of keep it cool for the rest of the day it still gets pretty hot in there considering it's still a cooler but um it is what it is uh, unfortunately there's no way around it um next step would be to uh actually i shade it i have like this little teepee i made for it that keeps the sun off it but uh it's still it still gets warm. It doesn't get as warm as when it was in the tote. I'd say maybe a good 10 degrees off. I have a thermometer in there. And uh, it was getting almost to like 86. Now I kind of keep it uh, 86 to 90 degrees in the previous tote. Sometimes even 95 degrees. And then I was able to bring it down to a good maybe 80, 82 degrees in this cooler. So what I did was um, kept the same layout on the, on the pipes, on the tubing that I had up here. This is kind of keep all the bugs out. Um, so I just put a little elbow on top to give me a little space to the inward of the cooler there. Just made a hole 
hole for the return and a hole for the drain. Lips up fine, so I can still, you know, dump my uh, my cool my uh, ice bottles in there in the morning, and then I just make a little groove on the side of the fridge here to uh, for the cable, so I don't pinch anything. I don't want anything overheating or anything like that. I did put silicone underneath this to fill in all the foam, so none of the foam is exposed, and then I filled the lid. I pumped some uh, some expanding foam in there, uh, so hopefully it'll so it cause a little bit more insulation when the sun's hitting it. So it did it did help, as you can see, I got a lot, lot more blooms, so that did help out. Uh, and then uh, it rains in Florida; everybody knows that. So to keep my electric from going from burning out or whatever, I decided to take one of the buckets that I got for free from my local supermarket, put my, uh, my power in there, and I just did a little groove on the side of the lid, just kind of lay it on top, it's already caught it, and it just kind of stays there, and it's already rained a couple times, and never got wet inside, so that kind of worked out well. So there it is, guys. Definitely consider doing this in a more, I say, controlled environment, maybe with lights even, or... At least some place where you can actually control the bugs. If you can get the bugs off, that's half the battle. And then you can figure out a way to control the heat. I definitely suggest that you get on Craigslist, find a really cheap cooler, 10, 15 bucks. Definitely, definitely worth the investment uh, and the headaches. Also, I've had a couple incidents where the tubing fell off. So what I did was I did holes in the back of the buckets and ran the tubing straight into the net pots kind of tangled them into the net pots and then that kind of kept them more secure and then I guess another thing I would suggest not to do is definitely these pepper plants are too little to be honest for this type of setup I would maybe go with two more on the lid maybe even three because you, you can see I mean they do get big but if you space them out I mean you can maybe for sure get two on these and maybe maximize these pots if you're using peppers because the the root systems aren't that big I mean you can see there they're doing all right a lot of algae in there and that's the only downside to this because I have no media but there it is I mean uh, the roots are doing fine I think this, this one's, they're all locked in you can see you can see some of the algae on the roots there or that could be also some uh, Something else I have no idea, but so far so good. Those are working well. Now, on these tomatoes, I would definitely not do these three inch pots again. This was a mistake from the get. I should have known that earlier, but oh well. Lesson learned here. Uh, these plants get huge. These, as you can see, I had to tie them up. Got them hanging fairly well through these little uh, air vents that I have. And just have some, some wire coming down and holding them up, which really work great but with the weight they just don't stay steady so I had to zip tie them and that kind of didn't work either so definitely 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 if you're doing tomatoes uh, definitely use media I'd say just throw a paint filter in there with some perlite call it a day no more problems I cannot count the amount of times I've had to come out here and rescue these poor tomatoes from utter disaster just because those pots didn't stay in place. I glued them at first, it was it was doing okay, but then I just, uh, then it's just the weight was just too much. And then they were just really just, as you can see, I had to just zip tie them to the lid. I, I guess just being cheap made it worse, trying to save on, on media, because I didn't want to use hydrogen to, to fill this bad boy up. So I decided to just, you know, use the three inch pot, I didn't want to mess with the roots either, so that didn't, you know, I, I should have just maybe started with a smaller net pot or just untangled them from the three inch one that I have here. But they're doing fine now. Let's see if I can get into one of these, see the root structure. I can turn this thing on actually because they've been off for a while. See in there? 
you were gonna get to this. I forgot which one was the easiest one to get into here. I mean, the root structure on these things just gets so big. It's really, you'll see when I get in here. I mean, just look at that. Look at that. The mere two weeks go nuts in there. If this thing had media in there, they'd just be going wild. So I think definitely, where anybody's doing this type of system, if you're doing tomatoes, I'd say go with some media. Do not try to, or at least a bigger pot, something that'll support the root structure and support the, the actual plant itself. And definitely, if you're going to do peppers in this type of system, you can get away with doing two or three on these buckets because they're so wide. Why not? So there it is, guys. Do's and don'ts. So far, so good. I guess I've had to overcome some issues, but uh, they didn't die. Hopefully, they'll uh, keep growing and going. That first purple one is just just pitiful. So I'm gonna have to see what I can do with that one. Maybe transplant somewhere else and get a new one in there. So there it is, guys.